I, I really have to vow to just let any stories be used to heal and to bless. If I'm going to tell any story, it has to be to heal and to bless. And not about maintaining a personality, identity, or trying to polish and adore another personality, identity. I had this experience with my grandmother Lillian, who, as she got up in years, further and further, she was diagnosed with dementia. But oftentimes she would just go back into a certain period of time, like in the <laughs> 19-teens or the 1920s, and particularly, and then retell a particular story from that era over and over and over and over. It would almost be like she would get set off and then she would start telling stories and she obviously enjoyed telling the stories because Time she would tell the same stories to people over and over and over, and um, I prayed on that because I was I loved her so dearly and I was going deeper and deeper within. And um, so one time when I came together with her, and she launched into one of her stories from back in that era or whatever. At the end of the story, I said to her, "What was the point of that story?" And she just said. The point. What was the point? Does it have a point? I said, well, I think it's, I think stories have a point. I said, because um, she loved Jesus. She adored Jesus. And I said, you notice with Jesus, when he, were, he would tell his stories, there was always a point. She said, you're right. Every story he told had a point. Because I said, he was teaching, he was demonstrating, you know, how, how to live, and he was, giving all these examples, and he really told a lot of stories. The prodigal son, she said, oh yeah, I remember. We, I went through a few of them. She said, that's very important. It has to have a point. So I said, so what was the point of the story you just told me? And she said, I don't know. I don't know if it has a point. And she said, that's interesting, because now with the context of Jesus, she wanted to be telling stories with a point, and she had a story with no point. So she, she was like, huh, oh, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it has a point. She was just like a little child, because we were joining in love, in purpose, and she was joining with me and looking, honestly, open-eyed and honestly to see if her story had a point. And she said, I, I don't think it has a point. So I finally I said, so really there's no need to tell it then? She said, I guess not. And, you know, it, she wasn't upset, I wasn't upset, you know, we simply joined together in joy and love and happiness, which is, which is our point, <laughs> and that was the point of everything. And uh, it was really good, and, and then even other times if she would start to tell something, I could just say, what is the point? And she would then stop, and she would say, ah. Oh, there is no point, and then it was a way of her breaking the pattern. Even though it was a, a deeply ingrained pattern, the you know, love is stronger than the patterns. And it's really all a reflection of our mind. If we're very sincere, and we follow the guidance of the Spirit, and we're open-minded, then every single encounter can be a witness of that love. We don't have to think, we have to put up with anything even putting up with stories. And it's interesting, I was just in South Africa, a gentleman from down there, he's come through uh, um, the circular breathing um, technique uh, and rebirthing. And he's really got it ingrained his mind, his mind about storytelling. It's not good. And uh, so when we were down there, we were down there in December for a while, he got to experience some parables that were used in purpose to kind of give an example or shine the light on something to heal and to bless. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm glad I got that experience of, of that because I was pretty close-minded around stories. I just thought nothing good can come from any story. 
So he was able to understand that there were some stories that were being used by the spirit in a helpful way.